One of my friends, he was a diver as well. We got to the pool and we we're changing and he just grabbed a little bit of like my skin in my back. And I was sort of like, what, why did you do that? He's like, well, I just wanted to feel how it was to be fat. There's a bunch of little stories like that that I can tell you. I felt like if I wanted to be able to dive against the best of the world, not only did I have to improve my technique, but also had to improve the image I was giving to the judges from the moment I stand on that board. The year was very important if I wanted to qualify for 2012 Olympics. I didn't see the results coming fast enough. And I ended up eating absolutely nothing or almost nothing. The easiest way to hide it was to eat in front of people and then after that, making myself throw up. I got so many good comments from athletes, from coaches, from judges telling me how good I was looking on the board, how confident I looked and how finally I looked like an athlete. But there was a part of me who said, but wait, you will see, I will become even thinner. And at the London Olympics, I ended up having one of the best results of my career. I was okay with just surviving and just like being able to perform. And then after, I crashed. I lost control. I'm not the kind of guy who's going to say, I need you to help me. But I went to see my coach and I was like, I really need to talk to you about something that I've been dealing with for the past two years. I remember, clearly remember that he just hugged me and he said that he would be there for me no matter what. In less than two days, I got help from Diving Canada and a psychologist. We needed to find the reason why it all happened. It was incredibly painful, but to me, those painful moments were necessary. 